Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing great. Today we're gonna to go back to school, we're going to economics class, and we're gonna talk about how the Fed can influence macroeconomics. Now because that macroeconomics is such a broad area, positively influencing the economy is challenging and takes much longer than changing the individual behaviors within microeconomics. Therefore, economies need to have an entity dedicated to researching and identifying techniques that can influence large scale changes. Now, I just need to go on record and saying, I can't stand that the Fed is even here and that they change these things. I think you should just let the free market go, but the government and central banks, which are two totally separate things, they always wanna get their little uh, dirty, grubby little hands in the economy because they wanna make the most money from it. So they wanna influence it. And we need to understand how they influence it so we know what they're doing next what they're gonna be doing in the future and what's coming in the future so that we, as the people, uh, society can make better educated decisions because this stuff is not being taught in schools. Now in the US, the Federal Reserve is the central bank with a mandate, it's a private bank, it's not government, it's not federal, and it has no reserves, but it has a mandate of providing maximum employment and price stability. These two factors have been identified as essential uh, to positively influencing change at the macroeconomic level. To influence change, the Fed implements monetary policy through tools it has developed over the years, which work to affect its dual mandates. It has uh, the following tools that it can use. First, it has the federal funds rate range. This is a target range set by the Fed that guides interest rates on overnight lending between depository institutions to boost short-term borrowing. Next, it has the open market operations. Purchase and sell, they purchase and sell securities on the open market to change the supply of reserves. Think they are literally manipulating markets. Like, we got to get that into everyone's head. There's the discount window and rate, lending to depository institutions to help banks manage liquidity, okay? So when banks don't have the money to lend, they make sure they've got it. This is, again, manipulation, right? You're not letting the uh, strongest survive and letting the weak die out. You're helping the entire system. Sorry, I digress. All right, next, reserve requirements. This is maintaining a reserve to help banks maintain liquidity, right? Because they wanna make sure that banks have so much money on hand that they're not lending out all their money. It's some stupid percentage uh, that they're allowed to loan out, but they wanna make sure that they have a certain amount of money always to prevent some type of bank run. Next is interest on reserve balances. This encourages banks to hold reserves for liquidity and pays them interest for doing so. So you've got to almost incentivize the banks for not loaning out all of your money and thus creating a bank collapse. Next, overnight repurchase agreement facility. This is a supplementary tool used to help control the federal funds rate uh, by selling securities and repurchasing them the next day at a more favorable rate. Just so you know, this is only supposed to happen when things are bad. And this is happening all the time now. Just a little hint. Now, next we've got term deposit facility. Reserve deposits with a term used to drain reserves from the banking system. Next, we've got central bank liquidity swaps. These are established swap lines for central banks from select countries to improve liquidity conditions in the US and participating countries. Central banks, think about the swap lines that are going on right now between America and Europe. That's actually a real thing. And we're trying to help keep them afloat. Sorry, again, I digress. Foreign and international monetary authorities repurchase uh, our repo facility. Well, let's say that fast three times. This is a facility for institutions to enter repurchase agreements with the Fed to act as a backstop for liquidity. And again, this is once again, the US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, which is not federal, um, helping to uphold other central banks. It's because they're all from the same family. Was I supposed to say that? Next, standing overnight repurchase agreement facility. This is a facility to encourage or discourage borrowing above a set rate, which helps to control the effective federal funds rate. Think about a bank that's going rogue and wants to just borrow, borrow, borrow. This can be set up to where it discourages banks from doing this because of the costs associated with that. Then let's talk about uh, the, the elephant in the room, 
The Fed continuously updates the tools it uses to influence the economy. So it has a list of many other previously used tools that it can implement again if needed. Why is this an elephant in the room? Well, because the Fed's always doing what people call pulling a rabbit out of a hat, the old magician's trick. But it's really not very, it's really not a new thing because central banks have been around for no joke, centuries. And they've done all kinds of manipulative uh, tricks to fool an economy that it's uh, doing great and then to build an economy up when it's not doing great. And it's really important that people understand this. Look, the point of this was to show you all of the different types of ways that the Federal Reserve and other central banks can influence macroeconomics. And it's really important just to have this broad um, understanding of it because you, when you see the Fed start to move and it shows up in the news, by then it's too late. The effects are already felt across the broad economy. But I want you to understand the tools that they uh, have used in the past and the tools that they will be using in the future to influence economies, your economy, your money. And that's important because once you understand that, you can pivot to make a lot of money in the future. I hope you got something out of this. If you like going back to uh, economics class, let me know down below and let me know some other topics that you'd like to go over and we'll do some videos about it. That being said, the Economic Ninja is out.